Action! There's three of you. There it goes. It's working. Okay. It's recording. That's a little bit. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. It's Inception. Have you seen the movie Inception? Okay. All right. You guys, uh, I should have had you get out a note paper. So get out some note paper. Naming. I don't complain because I'll put the notes back up. I'll put the PowerPoint. I'll put the PowerPoint. I don't know what that is. All right. It's all pounds. How many valence electrons does calcium have? 
It's right here. Oh, it has two. Two, correct. How many, um, how many uh, electrons does iodine need to get the octet rule to satisfy the octet rule? It has, it has seven, so how many would it need? One. So how many iodines would it take to satisfy this calcium? Well, if calcium is plus two and iodine is negative one, how many iodines would you need? <laughs> okay. Check this out. You have calcium. I want to I want to write its valence electrons like this. Say it, it has two extra electrons, and I want to write um, iodine like this. I want to let you see this visually. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So how do I satisfy the the octet rule here? Yeah. This one would steal this electron, and this one would steal this um, at the top. Yeah, at the, at the top. So now the iodines are happy, they got all eight, and the calcium are missing two, but underneath the two are eight electrons as well. So then the, the octet rule is satisfied, but this is now a plus two, and this is negative one, and this is negative one charge. Okay? Um, is that. Confusing to anybody? This is the time to ask questions if, if that, that confuses you. So what you need is a periodic table. You need to see, well, for uh, you need to know that the metal is going to lose electrons. Yeah? Can you just explain like the negative one two? Yes, I can. What, um, when you add an electron, this iodine was neutral. It had the same number of electrons as it had protons. But now it has, it's unbalanced. It has one too many electrons. But even though it has one too many, it's still happier than it was before. But because it has one too many, it has a negative charge. Does that make sense? So whenever you add an extra electron. Whenever you the one that you add to, mm -hmm. then it always is negative. Then yeah, because the electrons are negative. So if you add an extra electron, then you upset the balance, and now you have a negative one because you have one too many. Yeah. Yes. Is it because you took the two electrons from the calcium that it is plus two? Yes, yes. Good questions, guys. Keep asking questions. The more questions, the better the video gets. And, and <laughs> I'm serious, because because um, I have a student that's in Texas right now. That's, that's why I'm going to post this. Because she could just read the book, but I, um, I'd like to do the little explanation part. And I'm going to show it the, um, the rest of the day, so I don't have to keep doing the lecture over and over. It's kind of fun. They accuse me of being lazy, but I mean, hey, I got the technology. So, um, next, any other questions? That satisfied all the questions. Okay, so now let's look at, um, uh, let's talk about polyatomic ions. You can have ions um, that are actually made out of molecules. So for example, you can have sulfuric acid, which is H2, SO4, and this is a molecule, and these will leave the, the SO4 when you put it in water. When you put sulfuric acid in water, it ionizes to form um, H2, 2H2, um, and an SO4, that is a negative 2 ion. <coughs> so this thing here is a molecule, but it's, it's kept the electrons that it took from the hydrogen and the hydrogens are free to run around. Well, you can replace these hydrogens with the metal. So let's try calcium again. Calcium is plus two in a solution, like as an ion, it's plus two, and sulfate is negative two. So how would you combine those together to form a compound? Let's pick somebody else random. Um, Christian, oh, is it Oscar or Christian? Oscar, how would you um, how would you combine those to form a compound? What's the ratio, first of all? <coughs> how many calciums would you need for every sulf uh, sulfate? Sure. Nope. Four. Nope. If it's plus two and this is minus two, would they cancel each other out? 
Yeah, so what would that ratio be to cancel them out? Do you know what a ratio is? Huh? How many tires per car? Four. That's a ratio, four to one. So if it's if, if these would have to combine in a way to cancel out, what would the ratio be? Zero? No. One. One to one, right? Because for every calcium you need, you need one sulfate. Does that make sense? You look, still look confused. Okay. Do you see that adding these together would like um, them together would be an, it would be neutral and you could build a crystal out of it by <coughs> repeating uh, calciums and sulfates, calcium to sulfate, calcium to sulfate. Do you do you get that part? Yeah. Uh, you do? Yeah. Okay. So if you had um, say you had three of these, how many of those would you need to, to keep the crystal neutral? Three. Correct. So three of these and three of these would, would have, you would have a neutral or a balanced amount of positive and negative, correct? Well, what's the ratio between three to three if you simplify it? One. What, well, you say, you say it like this, you say one to one. Does that make sense now? Okay, all right. Now let's upset the apple cart a little bit and let's try a different, um, these are called polyatomic ions. Or they're also called radicals. Um, let's do aluminum, which is a plus three, and you can find that on the periodic table by looking over here. You see that it's one, two, one, two, three. So it have to lose three electrons, and uh, to be able to uh, have the to satisfy the octet rule. Uh, now let's do that with uh, uh, what's another good one. Uh, not nitrate, let's do um, carbonate, CO3, and that's a minus two. So how many, what is the ratio of aluminums uh, uh, per carbonate? Uh, let's see, what should I call? Carson. And take your hat off too, please. And everybody else that has had on. No, take it off and cover yourself in your little blankie. Okay, what's the ratio between how many aluminums and how many um, carbonates would I need to, uh, to cancel each other out? How many carbonates, what's the ratio between carbonate um, uh, polyatomic ions and aluminum polyatomic ions to cancel each other out? Uh, three to what? Very good. You get a sucker. Yes. Which one would be two? This one or this one? You can't see? You want to come up? Come on up. No, you can stand right here so you can see. You don't have to get the camera. Because that actually, to put on YouTube, but I have to have your parents sign something actually. So, so don't. Yeah, stay with them. So, well, let's get rid of this one. Let's write it again. Aluminum plus three. So, which one would you need two of? The aluminum or the carbonate? Yes. Because two times aluminum is going to be plus what? Plus six. How many carbonates would you need, Michael? Three. Oh, well, somebody said it for you. You're lucky. Minus, yeah, three times minus two is minus six. So now, do you see the ratio? Oscar, do you see the ratio here? How do we say that ratio? <coughs> Correct. <coughs> is there any confusion at this point? Yeah. So you're just like multiplying them? Yeah, you're, you're finding uh, the least common multiple is what you're doing. That's the mathematical term of what you're doing. Some of you will recognize intuitively what you need to do. You need to multiply two by this one to get six, and you need to uh, multiply three to, uh, by this one to get six, and then they cancel out. Okay, now we're almost done. 
together. Now we're almost done. We'd write that down like this. We'd write it aluminum to carbonate. And you have to put the parentheses to say, you know, because uh, this here is a whole molecule, so you don't want to like change any of the formula here, but you would put it outside like this. So aluminum carbonate would be Al subscript 2 and carbonating here in 3. Now the book has the, a, a table with those polyatomic ions, um, so if you need to look them up to, to finish the worksheet. There's also another thing too, uh, the transition metals, um, don't you can't use the octet rule on the transition metals. So all the D block um, all these D block here, you have to be told what the what the number of valence electrons is to find out what kind of ion it's going to make. So, like for example, the reason why you have to be told is because um, uh, some of these transition metals could have several oxidation states. They can lose um, one, two, or three electrons and still be happy, still be stable. For example, iron. If we put the Roman numeral one, how many electrons do you think it's going to lose? Common sense. One, okay? So then iron oxide, iron one oxide, actually you'd write it like this, you'd spell it out. Iron one oxide, how would you write the, the formula, um, Angelica? How would you write the formula for iron one oxide? Well, how many how uh, how many how many valence electrons does oxygen have? Just count across the periodic table over there, and don't include the D block. Oxygen is right here. Can you see it okay, or is it? You might want to stand up. Six. So how many does it need to satisfy the octet rule? How many? How many, how many, if you have six, how many does it take to get to eight? Two, right? So if this is plus one, and this is, what would be the, uh, the charge of an oxide since it needs two electrons? Huh? Negative, Negative what? Negative two. Correct. So oxide will be negative two. So how many irons would you need to cancel out the, the oxide? Two. Well, if this is plus one and this is negative two, how many would you need? Two to one. Yes, two to one. So you write it like this, Fe, two, and you guys are writing this stuff down, right? You guys are writing my notes down up here? Now what if this was iron 2 oxide, what would the formula be? Huh? 1 to 1, so how would you write it? Correct. Because if, if this was an iron 2, this, be, this would have to lose 2 electrons. And then two, these 2 electrons could be given up to the oxygen, and then you would have the ratio of 1 to 1. And then the formula would look like this. Now what about... Um, Iron three. And we would do two. Then what would the ratio be? Two to six. Yes, two to three. Correct. So I would write the, the ion charge like this, and then this would be two, and this would be three. Did we learn this in like eighth grade? Yeah. You probably you might not have gone into so much detail, but I think you And th there used to be an old style of doing this. They would call it um, uh, ferrous and ferric. Um, uh, the different oxidation states would actually have different names, but they've dumped that. Um, <coughs> with the, the common, the modern naming system, they actually don't write ferric oxide or uh, ferrous oxide. Um, there's three, I'm, I'm missing one, but I, I can't recall it right now. But instead they just write the Roman numerals to say the oxidation state. <coughs> And uh, like I said before, you can see how um, this would be good to transport oxygen in your body. 
because this oxidation state could change. The iron could grab more oxygen and then go to the cell and then um, uh, drop down to a lower <laughs> oxidation number and release the oxygen. Heads up. Yeah, yeah please don't do that to me. Because when you come up and ask your grades, I'm going to put my head down on my desk and pretend like I'm asleep. It's rude, right? That would be rude of me to do that? No, it wouldn't be? Oh, I'm just checking. All right. Um, let's see. Have I talked about? Okay. Almost all the, uh, the cations are, are going to be uh, metals, but there's, there is one example of a polyatomic ion that's positive. It's ammonium. Ammonium is NH4 plus 1. Uh, there's another one, uh, too. There's H3O um, plus, it's also plus 1. You don't have to actually write the 1. You just write plus. Hydronium, uh, that forms when hydrogen dissolves in water, a hydrogen ion. Um, we'll get more into that later. And then ammonium. So what would ammonium chloride look like? Let's pick something. Um, Adrian, since you already got the, the root beer, we know you're you're hitting on all on all. What's the question? Huh? What's the question? What would um what would ammonium chloride be? So there's ammonium. Mm -hmm. and here's chlorine. It becomes a negative one. So what would that become? What's the formula for ammonium chloride? One to one. It is one to one, but what would it look like? Hey, spell it out for me. What would the, how would you write the formula? Uh, like when you wrote the, like you did the one right now, the iron one, oxy, oxy one. No, that's like writing out its name. Um, but what I'm saying is, write, uh, what would you do to write out the formula? with this explanation, this is a time to ask questions if you're confused. Because I'm not you. I'm not the one receiving the lecture. You're receiving the lecture. So you ask the questions. Yes. So what's exactly the name? The name? Um, so this would be called ammonia. This is from ammonia when ammonia dissolves in water. And remember, um, we change the name when they become ions. Uh, so what we do is we give it a metal sounding name. Instead of calling it ammonia, we call it ammonium. And just like sodium or potassium or calcium, like all these, most of the metals in the periodic table end with the IUM suffix. So then, for our worksheet, like what do we do for the top part? The top part, you're going to take those, um, you're going to take the formulas and you're going to write out the name for it. Well, how would it sound? And remember, if it's a transition metal, you've got to put the parentheses in the oxidation number, which would be either one, two, or three. And you figure that out from the ratio. I don't. Is there any transition metal ones here? Yes. In the, number nine is a transition metal. That's manganese. That's not. That's not one of the. Um, uh, I think that's no lead and um, number seven and number nine. You'll have to um, figure out um, and write the oxidation state. And some examples are down below. Number twelve. Uh, shows uh, since vanadium is in the transition metals, it's got a Roman numeral in the middle, and chromium has a Roman numeral in the middle. So it has all these uh, uh, 
um, transition metals here. So you <coughs> that tells you what charges are. Those are actually easier because if you see a three, what's the charge going to be? Plus three, plus three. So those are easier on the ones that are um, uh, part of the the main sequence, the elements. The I'm talking the strong main sequence. Uh, <coughs> the main groups here: one, two, three, four, five, six, and eight uh, A. Those you just count across. So the metal <laughs> side, you're going to lose electrons, and these um, non-metals, you're going to gain electrons. Okay. All right. Good luck. <laughs>